This is Italy's most popular TV show. A live take on the day's news with young male presenters and even younger female models. It gets 9 million viewers a night. The channel which makes this show is owned by Silvio Berlusconi. In fact, the Italian Prime Minister owns the majority of the country's television output, giving him what the opposition claim is unjust control over the media. But it is legal, and it's the style, glamour and sexuality of the young women on his TV shows that Berlusconi is transferring into Italian politics. These women are among Berlusconi's candidates for next month's European parliamentary elections. All under 30, with almost no political experience, they could soon be Italy's contribution to the decision-making process on European lawmaking, which would also affect Britain. Milan is the centre of Berlusconi's business, property and media empires. He is the third richest man in Italy and the country's longest ever serving Prime Minister. Controversy has always dogged Berlusconi. He's been tried and acquitted in 12 Italian court cases. Last week, his wife accusing him of cavorting with minors at a party he attended and selecting young women like Barbara Matera here to run for senior government posts based on their looks alone. The emperor, as his wife calls him, must be kept entertained, she says. I've come to Milan to find out why, despite the scandals, Berlusconi is more popular than ever with Italians. A recent poll claiming he has a 66% lead over the opposition. For sure, Berlusconi is a great leader. He charms the people. That's why his government now is doing so very well. The Italian defence minister, Ignazio La Russa, one of Berlusconi's closest and oldest allies, was attending a local right-wing rally in Milan's centre. It's too late for us. What, what, what do you make of the uh, political scandal going on at the moment under Berlusconi? There is no scandal. There is no scandal. There is no scandal. I prepared the election list. I am the coordinator. I can reassure you that this is an absolute conspiracy of the media. Some of the girls are beautiful, others less so. But if they are beautiful, we don't mind. I found out one of the three young women at the centre of the controversy, Lara Comi, was going to be paraded in front of the public at another political event in Milan. So what we've got here is Lara Comi parading around with a local elder politician being manhandled by what seemed to be sort of political PR heavies and handing out flowers to members of the party. After the parade, Lara Comey agreed to meet me for an interview, the first time any of the three young women up for European election have spoken to the foreign media. Thanks for this. Did, did Berlusconi phone you personally and ask you to be an MEP? And if so, how did that feel? Uh, I'm very happy. It's a real, unique opportunity for a 26-year-old girl, an incredible experience, even being involved in an electoral campaign for only one month. He's choosing young women because of how they look. No. What, do you, what do you say to that? No, no, no. No, no, no. Berlusconi has chosen these candidates because their professional curriculum was right for the European parliamentary elections. The issue of beauty is debatable. One can be beautiful and this is a plus, but it's not the fundamental factor for becoming a candidate. Berlusconi once said you should never put two blondes together. Lara, polished and astute in the interview, was testament to Berlusconi's confidence in his own ability to sell a brand to the Italian public. A woman who two weeks ago was no more than a junior party employee, now teetering on the edge of international responsibility. Beppe Severnini, a leading social commentator, claims Berlusconi's political success is down to his shrewd understanding of the Italian psyche. He talks about things that people want to hear. He's a signore protecting it, you know. He's a new Medici, the new Sforza, saying, look, I got it all, I got fun, I got sport, I got actors, I got television, I got girls. Look how cute they are. People love that. The man doesn't have a competition, the man is solid, and the man uh, is a great marketing person. Berlusconi is some, in between Frank Sinatra, uh, Juan Perón of Argentina, and maybe Rod Stewart, never a dull moment. 
Next, I went to the one place I was likely to actually meet Berlusconi, perhaps the biggest trophy of his empire, ownership of AC Milan. Berlusconi, for me, is a man with giant balls. Excuse the expression, but he is our emperor minister. He's a great man, a sincere man, Berlusconi. He's a great man, our Silvio Berlusconi. We're happy with him, as long as they're over 18 years old. As David Beckham and Ronaldinho warmed up to play old rivals Juventus in front of 90,000 fans, I met Lara Comi outside the VIP area. This is where she first met Berlusconi. When I first saw him, I leapt the fence, just over there, like an athlete. OK. I ran to the president and we exchanged our first words. Lara also told me that Berlusconi had called her to say he had a sore neck and would not be at the game. If Berlusconi is the so-called emperor, then I guess this is his Colosseum. To foreigners, he may be crass and out of touch, but to the Italians, he's a football fan, he's a businessman, he gets the girls. He's not only the emperor, but to the majority of Italians, he's also one of the people.